This proves what we said earlier, the voltage doesn't jump. A naive person might think that we were going to jump right to the maximum. But instead of ju jumping to the maximum, we have to gradually and asymptotically approach the maximum because it takes char time for the charges to accumulate. Capacitors resist jumps in voltage. They do not allow the voltage to jump. Now we're going to do another graph that relates current and time. As a warm-up, let's suppose that the battery is delivering 3 amps of current. If the battery were delivering 3 amps of current, what would be the current through this resistor? <coughs> um, 3. And the current through the capacitor? 3. That's good. We've seen that when things are in series, they have the same current. Remember that an amp is a coulomb per second. We've talked about our ski lift analogy. We talked about that. Remember that we can think of the battery like a ski lift that's lifting the skiers from the bottom of the slope to the top of the slope. Three amps is like saying three skiers per second. It's like the ski lift is delivering three skiers per second. Well, if three skiers per second are getting off the ski lift, we would expect three skiers per second to be going through this portion of the path and three skiers per second to be going through this portion of the path. So I don't need to bother saying whose current this is. You don't have to say whose current this is, because everybody has the same current. That will simplify our graph. Now remember that before time zero, the switch was open. Before time zero, the switch was open. Well, what was the current then? Zero. There can't be current unless you have a closed loop. Good. There can't be current without a closed loop. This squiggly represents that before time zero, while the switch was open, there was no current. Then at time zero, we closed the switch. detail do we want to go into here? I guess we have to go into more detail. Unfortunately, we're going to need another graph. This was the graph for the voltage across the capacitor, but we also need to think about what the voltage across the resistor is going to look like. And we're going to use V equals IR to figure that out, at least sometimes. When the switch was open before time zero, what was the voltage across the resistor? One way to see that is there was zero current. Well, if there's zero current, there should be zero voltage. Now, at time zero, we close the switch. Let's think about the situation exactly at time zero. Let's think about the situation exactly at time zero. Let's suppose this is a five volt battery. This is a five volt battery. Now, at time zero, the battery is five volts. What's the voltage drop across the capacitor at time zero? Zero. How do you know? We already figured that out in this graph over here. Remember, the voltage on the capacitor can't jump. Since it was at zero a little bit before time zero, it must still be at zero at time zero. The voltage can't jump. So at this point, this is still zero volts. Well, if this is a five volt battery and the capacitor has zero volt drop, what's the voltage across the resistor? Zero. Take your time with that. Wait, so if there's... We've closed the switch. There's still zero volt drop across the capacitor. And we have a 5 volt battery. So there's 5 volts. That's right. Remember going back to the ski lift analogy, this is like a downhill portion. Well, the skiers are gaining 5 joules per skier going up the battery. The skiers are gaining 5 joules per skier going up the ski lift. 
but they're not losing any energy going down the capacitor. We just said the capacitor was zero volts. Well, they're going to have to lose all their energy on this portion then, because after all, whatever energy they learn, they, they gain going up the ski lift, they're going to have to lose by the time they get back down to the bottom of the ski lift. Well, if they're not losing any energy on the capacitor, they would have to lose all of their energy over here on the resistor. That means that the voltage here jumps to 5 volts on the resistor at time zero. Now over time, what's going to happen to the voltage across the capacitor? Over time, the voltage across the capacitor will increase. So over time, what's going to happen to the voltage across the resistor? It's going to decrease. After all, for example, when this is at 1 volt, what would the resistor be? 4. Right. Or when this is at 2 volts, what would this be? So we can see that as this increases, this has to decrease because they have to add up to 5. So the voltage across the resistor is going to decline asymptotically towards 0. The voltage on the capacitor increases asymptotically towards its maximum. So the voltage across the resistor has to be declining asymptotically. By the way, what will be the maximum voltage across the capacitor for this circuit with the 5 volt battery? Five. Now you can see why I said there was a maximum voltage on the capacitor. This is the maximum because you can't have more voltage than the battery. You can't have more voltage than the battery. Once you've taken all the voltage drop away from the resistor, you can't gain anything more. So this has to be approaching this asymptotically. We remember we said that capacitors resist jumps in voltage. Now you might have said, well, duh, nothing can jump. It makes sense that nothing can jump. But actually, some things can jump. Since the voltage is not jumping on the capacitor, it had to jump on the resistor. Notice how the voltage here jumped from 0 up to 5 immediately after we closed the switch. So there are things in circuits that can make discrete jumps. We can't just say that, nothing, we can't just say that everything has to move continuously. When we close the switch, they, some things will jump continuously. Because the capacitor won't allow its voltage to jump, the resistor has to have a, a jump in its voltage. We can see that it's important not just to say this is the VT graph. We have to label which is the voltage graph for the resistor and which is for the capacitor, because they have entirely different graphs. That's one of the biggest mistakes that students make with, with circuits. One of the biggest mistakes they make is they write down V or Q or I, but they don't say whose V or Q or I it is. Every single device has a different pattern. So you always have to say who's, which device you're focusing on. Well, now we can go back and work out the current. Now, remember, we don't need separate graphs for the current across the capacitor, battery, and resistor, because we saw everyone would have the same current. We saw that when the circuit was open, there was no current. Now, I guess the easiest thing to do is to focus on the current across the resistor. But that would be the same as everybody's current. So at time 0, what happens to the current across the resistor? We can use this graph to figure out what happened to the current across the resistor at time zero. Uh, jump to five. Jumps to five divided by R. Right. The voltage jumps to five volts, so the current jumps to five divided by whatever the resistance is, which I didn't tell you. But the important thing is that the current will jump. It will jump up to here. And remember, that means everybody's current is jumping, because everybody's in series here. And now, what's going to happen to the current across the resistor over time? Let's th figure that out. If we could just figure out what happens to the voltage over time, we would know what's happening to the current. Well, what's happening to the resistor's voltage over time? It decreases. That's what we just worked out in this graph. So what should happen to the resistor's current? Shock would decrease. Okay. But doesn't the doesn't the current in, this, in series stay the same? I think you're confusing two ideas. The correct idea is the current, when, when devices are in series, they all have the same current. When devices are in series, they all have the same current. But that doesn't mean that their current can't change over time. It just means that if it changes over time, it'll change the same way for everything. So there's a difference between different devices having the same current and different times having the same current. We have said that every, all these devices do have the same current, but over time the current can change. You have to be careful now then when you use words like constant, because they can be ambiguous. Do we mean constant across the devices or constant over time? Those are two different things. 
when we have devices in series, the current is constant over the devices, but it doesn't have to be constant over time. Now, we worked out the current across the resistor, but they all have the same current. So this is what's happening with current everywhere. So now this is a pretty complete description of what's happening here. And again, what do capacitors do? They resist jumps in voltage. But notice that that means they have to allow jumps in current. We just saw that the current here does jump at time zero. And this is the current across the capacitor too. So the capacitor does not resist all types of jumps. In order to prevent the voltage from jumping, it has to allow the current to jump. Pretty complicated. 